Welcome to this Maths Made Easy video on the laws of indices. And to start with, let's take a look at our first law here, which is the multiplication law. And the multiplication law states that a to the m times by a to the n is equal to a to the m plus n. So let's take a look at a few examples here. So for example, if we've got a cubed times by a to the 4 here, then we can simply apply this rule here to give us a to the 3 plus 4, giving us a to the power of 7 there. We can also use this law here even when we've got negative numbers. So for example, x to the 4 times by x to the minus 1. In that case, applying this law here, this would be x to the 4 plus minus 1, which is the same as doing 4 minus 1, and that gives us x cubed there. We can do this with expressions, so for example, x plus 1 squared times x plus 1 cubed. In this case here, again, we just apply this law here. This gives us x plus 1 to the 2 plus 3, giving us x plus 1 to the power of 5 there. Okay, 2 plus 3 gives us 5. We can also do this with fractional powers. So for example, t to the power of a fifth here, times by t to the two fifths. Well, in this case here, again, we just simply add the fractions together. So that's going to be t to the fifth plus two fifths, and one fifth plus two fifths simply gives us t here to the three fifths. And finally, we can also have multiple variables here. So for example, x y squared times by x cubed y to the minus 1. And in a situation like this here, we would treat each of these variables separately. So if we deal with the x variable first, that's x to the 1 times by x cubed. Okay, so we write that as x to the 1 plus 3 there. Okay, we'll simplify that in a moment. Let's also consider the y variable here. So that's y squared times y to the minus 1. And just like we saw here, that's just the same as doing the 2 plus minus 1, which is just 2 minus 1. That gives us y to the 2 minus 1. And if we simplify each variable separately here, well, x to the 1 plus 3 simply gives us x to the 4 there. And y to the 2 minus 1 would simply give us y to the power of 1, which we can equivalently express as just y there. Okay, so that gives us everything we need there for law 1. Law 2 here is the division law. And the division law states if we have a to the m divided by a to the n, we can express this as a to the m minus n. So again, let's take a look at a few examples where we can utilize this law. So for example here, a to the 6 over a to the 4 here. So this is a to the 6 divided by a to the 4. Well, we can easily express that in this form. In that case, this would be a to the 6 minus 4. And if we simplify this 6 minus 4 here, that will just give us a squared there. And again, we can also use this with negative numbers. So for example, x cubed over x to the minus 1. Here we just have to be slightly careful, as what we're going to be doing here is x to the 3 minus, and then we've got minus 1 here. Okay, So this is minus minus 1, and minus minus 1 here would be plus 1. That gives us x to the 3 plus 1 giving us x to the 4 there. Again, we can also use this law here with fractional powers. So for example, y squared divided by y to the power of a half. Well, in this case here, again, we just use this law, and that's simply going to give us y to the 2 minus a half here. And in that case, 2 minus a half is simply going to give us 4 over 2 minus 1 over 2, giving us y to the 3 over 2. You could write that as 1.5 if you prefer, but usually we would keep it in this exact form here. And finally, again, we can also do this with multiple variables. So, for example, if we've got x squared times y to the 4, and this is divided by x cubed, and then y. Well, in this case here, what we do is treat these variables separately. So here we can write this as x to the 2 minus 3. Just apply the division law here, and again, apply the division law here to this y variable. So this becomes y to the 4 minus this 1 here, 
so four minus one. And again, now just simplify each variable separately. So in this case here, we get x to the two minus three, that would give us minus one there. That's x to the minus one, and y to the four minus one simply gives us y cubed there. Okay, and that gives us everything we need for the division law. Moving on to law three now, we're taking a look at the multiple powers law. So here, let's say we have a to the m, and let's say we raise a to the m to the power of n. Well, in this case, we can express this as simply a to the m times n there. Okay, and again, let's take a look at a few examples here. So if we have, say, x cubed, and we raise this expression to the power of 2 here, well, we can simply apply this law here to write this as x to the 3 times 2, giving us x to the 6 there. Okay, again, applying negative numbers to this law here, let's say we've got y to the power of 4, and we raise this to the power of minus 2. Well, here again, we just apply this law, and that simply gives us y to the 4 times minus 2. And in that case, simplifying this power here, that gives us y to the minus 8 there. And again here, using this law with multiple variables, say we have x squared times by y, and we raise this expression to the power of 3 here. Well, what we do here again, is we just treat each variable separately. So in that case, this is going to be x to the 2 times 3, that's x to the 2 times 3. And now using the y variable here, that's y to the 1. And again, we just apply the power law here, or the multiple powers law, so that's y to the 1 times 3. Okay, and now if we simplify each one individually, that becomes x to the 2 times 3, giving us 6. And then y to the 1 times 3, giving us y cubed there. Okay, and that gives us everything we need there for the multiple powers law. The power zero law now is the simplest result we can use for the laws of indices. The power zero law simply states that anything to the power of zero is equal to one. So here we're stating anything to the power of zero is simply equal to one. So in this case, this applies to numbers. So for example, 12 to the power of zero is simply one. And this also applies for algebra and letters. So for example, x to the power of zero would simply give us one here as well. Okay, and that's rather brief, but that's everything we need for the power zero law. Moving on now to law five. And law five states the roots as powers law. So here we're saying a to the one over m can be expressed as the mth root, so that's the mth root here of a. So let's take a look at a few examples here. So for example, nine to the power of a half. Well, here, applying the roots as powers law, we can write this as the second root, or the square root here, of 9. Now, normally we wouldn't write the 2 here, but so we can see clearly what's actually happening here with the roots as powers law, I will state it. And remember, the square root of 9 simply gives us 3 here. For, say, 64 to the power of a third here, again, we can just simply apply the roots as powers law. So here... We're going to take the third root or the cube root of 64. And the cube root of 64 simply gives us 4 there. Okay. And here we can apply this even when working with algebra and variables. So, for example, if we've got x to the power of a quarter here, we could write that as the fourth root here. Again, we just take a look at the denominator to tell us that's the fourth root of x here. Okay. And that's the fourth root of x. Okay. So that gives us everything we need there for law 5. Moving on now to our penultimate law, which is the fractional powers law. And this law is simply an extension of the previous law we've just seen. So here, what we're saying is a to the m over n can be expressed here. Again, using this fact of 1 over n, we can express that as the m through of a. And all we do then is we raise this to the power of m. Okay, so like we said, this is just simply an extension of law 5 here. So in that case then, let's take a look at a few examples here. So for example, if we've got 16 to the 3 over 2 here, 
Well, what we do first is we take the second root here, because the denominator is 2. We take the square root of 16, and the second root. Again, we wouldn't normally denote this 2 here, but I will for the sake of clarity. So the square root of 16, and then we raise this full expression to our numerator here, which is 3. So here we take the square root of 16, which gives us 4, and then we cube that result. So we cube 4 here, and 4 times 4 times by 4 again simply gives us 64 there. Okay, so 16 to the power of 3 over 2 gives us 64. Let's say we have 27 to the power of 2 over 3 here. Well, in this case now, again, applying the fractional powers law here, that means we're going to take the cube root first. So we take the cube root of 27 here, and then we raise this expression to the, the numerator here. Well, as that's 2, that means we square this expression here. Well, the cube root of 27 simply gives us 3. So in that case, we just need to square 3. And 3 squared is simply 3 times 3, which gives us 9 there. And that gives us everything we need for the fractional powers law. And finally, moving on to our final law here, the negative powers law. And the negative powers law simply states that a to the minus m is equal to 1 over a to the m here. Okay. Well, let's take a look at a couple of examples here. So, for example, if we have 3 to the minus 2, we can write this as 1 over, applying the negative powers law here, we can write that as 1 over 3 squared. And we know 3 squared is 3 times 3, which would give us 9. So here we can express 1 over 3 squared as 1 over 9. Okay, so 3 to the minus 2 gives us 1 over 9. We can also apply the negative powers law here for expressions. So let's say we have 3x minus 1 to the power of minus 1. Well, here we just simply apply the negative powers law. So in that case, we get 1 over 3x minus 1 here to the power of 1. Remember, this is minus m, so that's minus 1, that becomes positive 1. And anything to the power 1 here would just give us the original expression. So that just simply gives us 1 over 3x minus 1 there. Okay? And that gives us everything we need for the negative powers law. And to finish with here, let's just make some closing notes on the laws of indices. So, if we take a number, or an expression, let's say a here, and we raise it to the power of 1, then that would simply just give us a itself. Okay, so that would just give us a. Okay, so 1 to the power of anything is also 1. So here, 1 to the power of anything, let's say a, would simply just give us 1. Okay, doesn't matter whether a is positive, negative, or fractional, it will always just give us 1 there. Okay, so that gives us our final notes there, the laws of indices, and that concludes this Mass Made Easy video on the laws of indices.